This video is about 3D printing of concrete. I think it's gonna totally change the concrete industry. I'm gonna tell you the benefits, the challenges, and go over a few case studies. My name is Tyler Lay, and I love spreading the gospel of concrete. Thomas Edison, one of the greatest inventors of all time, he perfected the light bulb. He gave us the phonograph, He's the developer of the motion film camera, and he owned his own cement company. Can you believe that? He also invented the horizontal kiln. But why did Edison get into cement? Because he had a dream. Edison wanted to build cheap housing for people. He knew that people would spend too much money on buying houses. And if he could figure out a way to make them cheaper, everyone would benefit. And this is a picture of Edison with his concrete house. He made a cement company so he could start building concrete houses. To do that, he had these very complicated forms. These forms had everything. It had the kitchen, it had the bookshelves, it had a couch made out of concrete. Amazing. They were kind of expensive and kind of complicated, but this is still a surviving Edison concrete house. It's over 100 years old and it's in amazing shape. It's totally beautiful. These concrete houses have huge benefits. They reduce cost by about three times over a normal house. They're classy looking and look awesome. They're energy efficient, they're safe, they're durable, Baby, they are my dream home. But there are some drawbacks. That complicated, crazy formwork was really expensive. Builders had to construct over 50 homes before they could recoup the cost of the formwork. And that just didn't make sense. And that killed Edison's idea. Formwork's a big problem for concrete. It more than doubles the cost. If we're gonna build a concrete structure, first we have to build these wood forms, then we're going to tie reinforcing bars with inside of it. Next, we pour the beautiful concrete, and then we remove the forms off the outside. So let me get this straight. To get a concrete structure, I have to build a wood structure out of forms. I have to build another structure out of steel and concrete, and then I have to remove the wood structure. I built two structures. I took one away to get one. I think there's a better way to do this, and I think it's with 3D printing. 3D printing is using this robot-controlled printer head, and you put concrete on the ground. It comes down the tube, down the tube, and you start placing it, you go over, over and you just start going layer upon layer, layer upon layer. Let's check this out and see this in action. Here's a 3D robot printer from Russia. Here it is printing a house. It's in the center of the house and as it spins around and around and around, it keeps printing the walls. Notice there's no formwork. As you keep watching it spin round and round, you'll see these little white bars that are inside of it. What are those? Those are actually PVC tubes that a human is coming in and putting in between the layers. Those PVC tubes are where you can put the reinforcing. They're where you can put the utilities or the pipes. This is a pretty efficient way to print a house. There are tons of benefits with 3D printing. You're gonna have minimal formwork. You're gonna have huge labor savings. You can make really efficient shapes and you can have a lot less waste. You can just produce the concrete that you need and you don't have any extra. There are some major challenges. I know if you're like me and you're a veteran of the concrete industry, you're thinking, I can just think of a million things that can go wrong. This concrete, it's gotta be able to pump, but it's also gotta be able to stand up, almost like toothpaste coming out of your tube. How do you reinforce it? How do you get reinforcing inside of it? Because if concrete cracks, it's not very strong and you need the steel to help hold it together. How do you get good bond between the different layers? How do you evaluate this material coming out of the printer head and make sure it's right? Because if it's wrong, 
you're gonna put a whole layer of poor concrete in a structure, and that is a big deal. So yeah, there are some challenges, but there are people that are doing this and making this happen today. The US Marines are working heavily. They've developed and printed a 500 square foot barracks. That's like a house for soldiers. This typically takes about five days and 10 Marines to build. They've printed it with four Marines in four hours, and they're claiming it's the largest on-site concrete print ever. This is what a picture of it looks like. There's a mixer, there's a pump, the concrete pumps down here, and it goes down on the surface. This big gantry is this printer frame and the printer head, and it moves around in a controlled manner. And this is what the barracks looks like once it's done. You can see all the little printed layers in there. The Chinese have been 3D printing for years, and they've claimed to produce a 12,000 square foot or 1,100 square meter house. They use a 3D printer to precast or pre-print these elements that then they assemble on the site, and they can assemble 10 houses in one day. Pretty cool, right? This is what a picture looks like of their 3D printed wall. This is all the materials that they claim is inside their magic concrete mixture. You can notice that they've got some very unique shapes here, some hollow regions for other reinforcing bars and actual concrete, and this kind of reinforced shape to hold up the wall. Notice that, that not every layer is being printed perfectly. There's some imperfections. This is what their completed structure looks like. Looks pretty awesome, right? I'd love to live in that house. And you can see it from a different viewpoint, but even notice there's some staining, some efflorescence that's happening. So this is not like a perfectly constructed product, but it's pretty cool. If you go inside of it and look at it, you can definitely see these layers and the utilities, the lights, the power, the air conditioning has to be hung on the inside so you can kind of see it. In the Netherlands, they've actually 3D printed a pedestrian bridge. This is done by Edenhoven University of Technology. It's about 26 foot long, about 20 foot wide. It's a pedestrian bridge. It's made mainly for bicycles and it's post tension. What they did is they actually pre-printed each one of these pieces, hooked them together with steel rods, going in this direction and they have these big steel supports at the edge. This is what it looks like being 3D printed in the lab and notice there's this spool. What? What does a spool or this spinny looking thing look like on the side? Well, it's actually reinforcing wire that they're interweaving in with the concrete print, putting it in between each one of the layers to help reinforce the bridge. And this is what it looks like in place. And it was a big day. Lots of cameras on the concrete, as there should be. So 3D printing, I think, has tremendous potential. And for all you haters out there that can think about things that are wrong with it, I agree, it is not gonna change our industry tomorrow, but it's gonna have a huge impact in the future. Please keep an open mind and realize that this is still evolving. But let's go back to Edison. He couldn't figure out how to make this happen, a concrete house. That was inexpensive, but 3D printing, that might be our solution to inexpensive housing. I think that would be pretty awesome. Hey, thank you so much for watching this. If you know someone that would like this video, please share it with them. Let them know about this channel. Tell them about the greatness of concrete. And always give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave me a comment below. Ta-ta. Bye.